ladies and gentlemen. So 15 years. Yes, today marks the 15th World's Day Against Death Penalty. 15 years of active work of awareness, 15 years of worldwide advocacy, 15 years of improvements, celebrations, support, campaign, prison visits. And yet, 15 years later, in the 21st century, the World Day Against Death Penalty still exists because death penalty still exists too. So what is one more speech going to do exactly? Especially since I'm going to resonate very much with the Dr. Livingston and my colleague I said. Well, maybe not then, but I hope not. Because I, Stephanie Vivoal, as an ambassador, as a member of my European Union family, as a human being, I will never stop making speeches until that cruel and inhuman punishment stops once and for all. The purpose of speeches is to share a message through a voice. Well, today it's not only one voice, but many voices coming from the maximum security prison number zero, from the songs of women and men on the death row. Many voices of the condemned of Uganda that are resonating on this day. And their songs spoke of redemption, of forgiveness, of second chances. So I, as a fellow human being to the condemned, to the inmates, I shall talk today about redemption, about forgiveness, about second chance. I shall talk on their behalf about life. I have to tell you that I did not always seem this way. Indeed, when I was a teenager, I was in favor of the death penalty. I thought it was necessary for the worst crimes, like rape and murder of children. But I've changed my mind. Why, you might think? Well, because I reflected on it. I witnessed the life in prison during my visit in France and in Uganda. I met the people on the death row on life imprisonment. I met murderers, thieves, drug traffickers. And I did not see monsters. I saw people. I saw human beings. So now I believe in redemption and forgiveness. And I feel so much better about myself. Now I know that death penalty is not the answer. Let me quote, please, a French uh, politician called Jean Jaurès. He is a Christian, and he said in the 19th century, death penalty is contrary to the highest aims, the most noble dreams that humanity had over the last 2,000 years. It's contrary to both the spirit of Christianity and the spirit of revolution. And indeed, the Christian only puts which are the best-selling books in the world, are true testimony to that spirit. Because the Bible, on numerous occasions, showed that God had mercy. Ugandans are religious people, be it Christian, Muslim, Jewish, and God showed his love by not condemning us. So why should we, humans, we, the sinners, condemn other fellow humans? Why not forgive and offer help instead of condemning? Men are sinners, they kill one another. But society, government, shall rise above the condition of a fallible man and find in itself the superior strength to forgive and to redeem. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, a French philosopher, I'm putting many French people, because I'm French, <laughs> also from the 18th century, the age of enlightenment, he said about government and the use of force, and he said, in any case, frequent punishments are a sign of weakness or slackness in the government. There is no man so bad that he cannot be made good for something. No man should be put to death, even as an example, if he can be left to live without danger to society. So to govern in a peaceful and democratic country such as Uganda, there is no need to use excessive force and there is no need to condemn criminals to death. But there is a need for justice and there is a need for redemption. So today I dare say, and please not be shocked, that death penalty is institutionalized murder. Not only death penalty is institutionalized murder, but waiting on death row has been recognized as torture. Does death penalty, death penalty allow victims to get reparation? You can think about 
yourself. To every crime there shall be a price. Yes, we all agree on that. And all these activists, we are together today, we will never sh say that crime shall go unpunished. This is not our message. But the death of the criminal will never bring back the loved ones. The death penalty is not justice. The death penalty is not prevention. The death penalty is not reparation. It is only revenge. And the abolition of death penalty is a choice of society. A choice based on the respect for life and human dignity. It's a moral choice. It's a political choice, and here in Uganda, it is your choice. To the other one, I would say, who said, you know, we have urgent matters to deal with, this is secondary matter. Well, if matters of social progress are only that dealt after economic or political issues, after dealing with corruption of growth, for example, women like myself will still not have the right to drive, still not have the right to work, and still not have the right to vote. So I, as a woman, personally thank the courageous politicians who push through social progress despite the burden of the political agenda. So no, Uganda does not need it. And yes, now is the time to abolish it. I salute the Mauritius de facto of where no execution has been carried on since 2009, but this is not enough. But we want more. Your fight is for the abolition of the death penalty in Uganda, and we shall support you until it is obtained. Because once again, abolishing the death penalty is affirming respect for human life and dignity. It may seem impossible, but the abolition of the death penalty in Uganda is not impossible, and we shall fight with you until it's done. I thank you for your attention.